think Underlord is really good for Team Secret, especially with the tiny pickup. Remaining. But if they do live steal, uh, uh, then it'll be the DK. I mean, I guess he'll be fine with the CM or uh, and D DK is pretty good laner early on against the OD. You should be able to. Oh no, it's gonna be like either a carry or often DK. They're gonna have like DP is a hero that uses the CM aura very well, and DP plus Earth Spirit is something similar to the sniper and Earth Spirit in the early game, where there's a lot of kill opportunity onto the enemy mid laner. Yeah, and the silence is also really, really good against uh, the Bane and the OD, the double save. Yeah, against the OD, it's really good. In this fights, he, first of all, he can't save and he can't use the and orb. And he doesn't yeah. want to get an early BKB. I mean, you can, but it kind of sucks if you have to buy a BKB early on OD. Generally, you would want to purchase it after like maybe a Blink plus a Pike or a Fall Star so that you have the mobility to move around. I like when teams have uh, multiple sources of uh, building damage. This way you have uh, Dragonite and DP. We saw how IG picked in pretty much both games. No tower damage, which is always a bad choice. I'm not sure how, how teams are still able to, to do that. Like have zero, like literally zero tower damage. Well, I mean, some teams have the... Team secrets turn back. That's the uh, Abaddon and OD combination where you have a lot of save. It's similar to having an Omni with uh, the OD, because you're going to have an infinite mana. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. But still, those silence from Earthbreed and DP, I mean, you can easily render the Abaddon useless if you can actually cast it. Uh, during the fights, yeah. uh, so Abaddon still needs to get uh, really close to the OD to, to save him or to keep him alive. I would say Secret has answers to that. But it's very clear that Vici is like building around this OD. OD is going to be the center of the, their lineup. He is the, <laughs> the raid boss if uh, everything goes well for, for them in the laning phase. I mean, they do have Bane. Bane is already a really, really good hero at securing their laning phase. Mm. So they're gonna maybe need just another initiating hero. Uh, I think I mentioned Elder Titan, but Elder Titan is not like a reliable initiate, but it's really good uh, with their lineup because they have like a mix of uh, magic, uh, some physical damage, and Elder Titan will provide the follow up for the tiny or the OD to start things out with the Astro. They don't run much, uh, much task, right? No, uh, they try to. I mean, if they pick it, I think Fenrir plays it. It's not Lamb. They'll switch roles. Uh, and that would be rather weak. Bane plus one more position five hero. Yeah. Just doesn't feel Ten right. Fenrir will more than likely take the Bane. It is his most played in the last. Seconds remaining. How would the ET fit in their lineup? Sorry? ET? ET. Yeah. Yeah, ET is okay. Like I said, uh, it's one of uh, Lamb's like, comfort heroes yep. as well. But he hasn't been playing ET much lately. Not though. lately, no. Yeah, before he was. Uh, yeah, right. before this tournament, in fact. Wow. Meepo Me ban. Meepo ban. Interesting. Don't want to get I mean, cheese. Yeah, there is there is a Meepo player. Uh, there is a Brood player. There is a Huskar player. Uh, all of them the same person on Team Secret. So they do have to worry about that a little bit, I guess. I kind of feel like if it was me, I would worry more about the Brood than the Meepo. Yeah. Yeah, to be honest. <laughs> Mm, not maybe so sure maybe about they, that. Maybe they need uh, some more physical damage in terms of something like a, like a troll. Maybe they're running out of time. Ten Please seconds left. Oh, uh, Elder good. Titan. Yeah, I mean, I mean it fits their lineup. It does, and, and when it's obvious like that as well, it's good. Uh, like good at securing the lanes. They're gonna have like two bullies, like Bane and Elder Titan. I, I would say it's pretty much Ten going to secure two minutes. of their lanes, and you have a CM on Secret. CM is not Five the best laner. He's pretty pretty weak in the early stages of the game. Yeah, once you get your levels, it's gonna help. But before that, uh, CM is gonna struggle against these kind of heroes, and you can only use one like Frostbite early. You may now select your heroes. 
That's a good laner. Uh, it's a good laner against OD. If if you can ever get that matchup, but I think it's probably gonna be laning against the Tiny, and he's gonna have the Earth Spirit to back him up. But Tiny deals uh, nice with Enchantress to one extent the the cleave, so she mm -hmm. he can actually hit her with the combo. But they need to not steal too much uh, XP out of Tiny, so his combo is strong enough. Okay, prediction game time, Jack. I like the synergy of how they protect. Okay. I'm sure about VG Strap, but I'm not sure about them as a team. Okay. And you've definitely erred towards <sighs> better but team over draft, haven't you? In the yeah, last few like days. because when everything is that close, usually the better team will win. Sure. And, and I think Liquid, uh, sorry, not Liquid, uh, Secret is the better team here, so I'm gonna go with Secret. Okay. I'll go with Secret as well. Uh, Chandler, I'm not a big fan of her. Sometimes uh, it can work, but uh, against the OD, she has a lot of weight range and against the battle i think it, it's a great pick and uh, overall i think secret is a better team okay all right very definitive from our panel in one way or another one for vg two for team secret time to find out as we head into the arena for game number one of a very important game can china finally get one through to the quarterfinals of the upper bracket let's find out with game number one as Paul said, it's been a very short day one as we have been all 2-0s and all the Chinese teams so far have been knocked out. But Vici Gaming, a lot of hopes of the crowd as well as a lot of hopes in themselves rests on this game against a very tough opponent in Team Secret. That being said, William, I do feel like this is the best game of the day. Team Secret uh, has always been a stellar team and they didn't get top of their group, so they're actually playing in this uh, elimination round. But we also have Vici Gaming who may not have been the most consistent team in the world, but have had very high highs. This is a talented roster. Yeah, surely China must win one of these four, right? Surely, surely they must win. Four At least chances. not get too old all the yes. way through. There's a lot of pride here. Uh, and I mean, Vici's draft is not bad at all. There's a good mix of team fight, good laning. I love their draft. Yeah, but there is something interesting that we should talk about. Yes. Probably the most interesting part about this is that we have a Ace Enchantress. That's right. You thought that you had to worry about the Meepo. You had to worry about the Broodmother, the Huskar. Ooh. Turns out you also have to worry about the Enchantress for Ace. Yeah. Somebody was telling me that they found that Ace was probably one of the best pickups of the year. Not just because he's highly skilled, but because of the diversity of heroes that he can play. Yeah. You, can, you can put this guy on anything. He's almost always going to be stable. Do a very good job overall. He can carry games when he needs to. Uh, he can relinquish that role and allow mid one to play some of the harder carry mids, if that's necessary as well. Yeah, uh, feels like he's definitely the breakout player of the year. Yeah. And on the other side, we have this Vici squad, who just looks so talented. There's just this is a very talent-laden lineup, but for whatever reason. We haven't really seen them win the big one yet. But this would be a good start, taking out a very strong secret squad. And they've got a pretty good lineup for them to do it. After all, they've got the Bane Elder Titan. Lana having that Elder Titan is a favorite as always. Vici Gaming also have Young 11, Old 11, wherever you want to call them, 11. Playing the Abaddon, I think that's probably one of his uh, kind, of, kind of signature heroes just because of the fact that it's not going to die too much in the laning phase. Yeah, that's a... Uh, when I think of 11... Be aggressive. Yeah. Be -E aggressive. He's going to run at you, and he's <laughs> going to die a lot. That's uh, that's kind of his characteristic. That's like his special move, you know? He's like, yeah. you, you're going to kill him like six times. But he's like, on the seventh time, though, I'll take this lane. All of a sudden, he gets the tinted glasses. He pushes them up to his forehead. Yeah, this was his plan all along. <laughs> he I, followed into my trap. I think that Western offlaners respect this guy more than any other Chinese offlaner. They do. Yeah, they think that 11 is a beast. Like, it's the tactical feat. Mm -hmm. It drags so much attention away uh, from the mid lane and the safe lane. You've got to try to give cores the best possible game and that's what he's done uh, pretty consistently throughout Vici, but it is a sort of unstable way to play because you are still feeding away quite a bit of gold. Yes, and I, I would also say that another downside of him is on those big team fighters, where if you have a Tidehunter or Enigma, he's not always going to land those sick ultimates. 
Uh, he is going to have a couple of blunders, and sometimes on those kind of heroes, you can't afford those kind of blunders. Yeah. But he is, I, I think, more than anything, I feel like he's a momentum player. Somehow that if he does get a good start, he can take over a game for you. And at the same time, if he does get shouted down in the laning phase, the weird part is he still finds a way back. Yeah, that's... Uh... He, he just, like, he dies over and over again, but he knows, like, it feels like he, he knows what he's doing, and he knows he's going to be able to come back into the game at some point. It's like a certain amount of confidence yeah. that you need to have as an offlaner, because when your confidence is broken as an offlaner, you're going to start to adjust to play more scared, more timid, and as a result, like, you start to fear the deaths. Like, I've actually known some pro players that sometimes, like, get too involved in things like social media, and they see that people talk a lot about like how often they're dying or how mm -hmm. poorly they're doing because if you're an off laner and you're an 0 and 6 you're gonna look the worst yes it's just how it goes but you can't really lose that aggression at any point like the way that you play is the way that you play and that kind of consistency allows your team to play around that but uh we should talk about the enchantress more i think that sure. the reason ace is going to go mid is so that they can avoid the death prophet versus od matchup very unfavorable for death prophet so instead they're going to put uh, Ace mid as the Enchantress. What's OD supposed to do? Yes, you can Astral, but you're not really going to get very many right clicks off. No, certainly not. So this should kind of be a free farming Enchantress. We'll see. Well, oh. Early engagement here. We are going to have the Spirit out from Lonim, so he's going to try and get some early damage in. But with mid one kind of securing these two supports aggression, Lonim can't really chase them down with his boots first build. So he won't be able to get that nice early damage in. You see Eleven walking up to his top lane where he's going to be in 1v1 against Fada. Uh, these are actually, I would say, two pretty proficient uh, 1v1ers. Uh, despite them being off laners, Fada's obviously had uh, a lot of experience as a mid laner, was known as a very oppressive mid laner who likes to be able to shut down the enemy mid. Uh, while Old Eleven, I think, in those 1v1 scenarios has actually shined very well as an off lane. Yeah, I like that you say that. He, he's an oppressive mid. He's that type of mid that's just going to shut you down. Uh, very good at denies. But I'm not sure how this matchup goes. Not an offlane player. I think you're feeling okay if you're 11 right now. Yeah, that's what I thought so too. I think the, the hardest part about this side lane DK, especially since you're third in farm priority in a game like this, that you're probably not going to have access to the courier as much, mm -hmm. which might limit things, I'd imagine. That means we are going to have a very aggressive lane coming out from Team Secret. Uh, not full on aggro lane, because we do have a Crystal Maiden currently farming up the jungle and Earth Spirit's rotating into mid. So right now it's just an off lane Death Prophet all by himself. Roll it onto the courier, going for it. Yapsor Yapsor. is going to be able to get it. What a big pickup that is, especially since we already mentioned how this OD won't have the easiest time against this Enchantress. If Enchantress really starts laying in a lot of harassment, there's no couriers to bring in region, and now the roll in from Yapsor comes in as well. TP out from Lana, might be a little bit too late though. Ace trying to get that last hit off, couldn't quite get it. Stomp would land on Ace, but it won't result in a whole lot. Healing South used, but Paparazzi will not have any more region funneling in. That was pretty scary for Paparazzi. Him churning for half that second, mm -hmm. but Ace cannot commit. Very nice rotations from Yapsor, putting a lot of pressure on the lanes from the get go. And if Vici is going to win this game, they're going to need a good lady face. Lana trying to interrupt Puppy's uh, Crystal Manon, who's sitting in the jungle. Did pick up the level 2 successfully, though, so we have the early aura. Very helpful here. What do you think about this uh, Death Prophet offlane that Midwan's kind of running right now? He seems to be doing all right. I just can't imagine that this is a hero you want to sack too much. Probably isn't. But the good thing about Death Prophet is that her laning phase is kind of whatever because... Uh, her spells are so powerful right? mm -hmm. and the best part about her like when you have a hero that you can build defensively almost entirely defensively but she still deals damage you're always going to be useful at some point in the game and once you get yule scepter and a little bit of hp you're still going to be one of the highest damage dealers in the game right You've got good survivability because of your spirit siphons the hero kind of just all comes together which is why it's so popular right now Taking a look at the CS right now. The top laners are pretty much even between the Abaddon and the Dragonite. Our mid matchup 13 and 5 for the OD compared to the 5 and 1 on Ace. So really not being able to uh, to get any CS, it seems, against this OD is dominating this matchup. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a little bit more even. 
The Enchantress isn't a, really, a hero that I really play against too often. As long as he doesn't die, he's fine, but now he's going to be slowed down. Yapsor is going to make sure he hits this one. Doesn't have the kick, though. Puppy needed to be able to get there in time for the Frostbite. Couldn't get it, though. Smart, smart read from Paparazzi going for the instant TP. Ace. Missing a lot of creeps. We saw him miss three under the tower. That is costing him dearly right now as Yaps are gonna start the rolling boulder down to bottom and Puppy is gonna make the rotation to 11. Puppy played this kind of jungle enchantress for the time being. <laughs> well, and you're not gonna fight in a hard camp there, Puppy. And that should prompt 11 to back up. And it is. Puppy should know that there's a ward now too. Yeah. Because of the spawn. And indeed, he's gonna ping it. A haste rune going to be picked up by Yamsor. Yeah, Let's see if we can make some sort of use out of this. The uh, supports not being hugely impactful just yet for Secret. Yamsor had that nice early pick off on the Courier, but since then, both the CM and the Earth Spirit have not found a successful rotation. I think they anticipated this mid lane being a lot better. Mm, yes. Because right now it is, it is one-sided as Ace is getting almost doubled up right now in CS. And keep in mind that Ace has had a lot of help from this horse bear. Oh. Trying to go to jump in, bottom lane. Dead Prophet barely able to stay alive with the Spirit Siphon. Gets a decent amount of healing out. Will be okay. Had to use both the charges. So he's got to be a little bit more careful. That's going to pop through the back. Yaps are still only level one. All supports. Not in the best of positions. Is Yaps are going to get slept up? Right click by Fender, who's ready level three. Tries oh. to get in front. Almost got it. He was right on top of that boulder, just not quite forward enough. Lane, paparazzi, setting up with the astral, but Enchantress should not die to any sort of ganks. Yeah, the heal already up, and they can't really get any right clicks with level three untouchable. Oh, 11 continuing to stay aggressive in this 1v2. He got kind of gone on, and he was like, no, I'm going to still fight this one out. Of course, out of breathe fire stomp is actually going to miss there on ace. Puppy but. TP's mid, thinking that there's an engagement. It's hurting the support so much. They're rotating as often as they can to compensate for the lanes, but not really accomplishing anything as uh, Vici, pretty defensive heroes. So besides the, the 1v1 mid matchup, not going as well as they thought, is there anything else that Vici Gaming is doing correctly that is sort of inhibiting secret support from being effective? I think their supports are prioritizing the laning phase very well. Like, they know it's very unlikely that their OD dies, so mm -hmm. they're not overcommitting to it. They're just allowing him to CS. They know that he's winning the matchup. They're being very patient, and instead they're focusing on this bottom lane, and they're allowing their heroes to do their work. Because if you look at Secret's lineup, they're very ulti-dependent. With this Death Prophet, this Dragonite, and the Enchantress, Ace isn't really going to threaten this lane until she gets into it. And Vici are very aware of that. They're playing very patiently as a result, whereas Secret are almost over-rotating around the map. They're trying to get aggressive, trying to make things happen to salvage the landing phase, but uh, haven't really been able to do too much. A sleep out. Elder Titans coming across too. This is gonna be hard pressed for mid one to be able to survive through this one, and sure enough, they actually don't even need Lana. They have the burst damage between the brain sap as well as the tiny. William, why am I seeing so many uh, so many teams be willing to pick this Death Prophet into the tiny mid lane, actually? Paparazzi has no imprisonment, and the impetus shots are doing a lot to him right now. Had the vision for a second there inside of the trees. Paparazzi cops one more hit, but will survive. Now that Ace has the level 6, this is what they've been waiting for. Bottom making a rotation. Picks up his level 7 and treads. Came bottom lane, and so did the Death Prophet. I thought maybe they were just doing a full switch, but it looks like they're going to commit to a push here. They've got to get the power minimum because they're giving up this top lane as a result. Puppy going to try to soak up some of this experience, but 11 will feel very unthreatened. Yeah, he went for the 0-4-2 build, so that Curse of Avernus will help him push the tower even faster. Plus, he's got the Helm of Dom creep. I think Still. Secret, they want to commit for this, but Ypir being really patient around this area, not really giving them anything. They've got a ward behind uh, Secret, so they know if they disengage, and instead they're going to try to steal the stack. Will this stack make it worth it for them if they actually take all of this? It's pretty good. The spirit goes out. They actually are going to try and interrupt this, see if they can take some of the CS before Secret can nab most of it. The but. worst part about this, though, is that Eleven has been given a lot of time at top by yeah. himself. He's got a Helm of Dom. 
He's gonna pump Mata from all the way back. His real goal was to try to get the tower, but Vici all over it. Pretty interesting how he priori prioritized the Helmet Dom so much he doesn't even have uh, boots or didn't. Just picked it up in the side shop and is trying to complete face boots now to get the full lane domination of the Abaddon. It's the nature of the hero because you aren't really going to rotate anywhere. Mm -hmm. You want to focus on this top lane. It's almost like a Beastmaster when it comes to play. And your Curse of Avernus gives you movement speed inherently anyway. So yeah. even if you get gone on, you probably have a little bit of boost still to run away. The matchup has gotten a lot better since Ace has grabbed his level 6. Now the OD doesn't even want to be here. Well, what does our OD do? Vici Gaming, probably pretty happy with the laning phase so far, but maybe they need to switch things up as Ace has gotten that critical power spike. I think there's an inability to kill him right now with the heroes that they have. Yeah. I think they have to just leave him alone. You don't think uh, Tiny could rotate in? No. Nah. I think he has to have his Blink Dagger minimum before they get the kill. Uh, well, Lanham, he tried to help out the mid lane. Gonna be caught by the two support. Secret, we're lying in a way. They knew Ace was pressuring the mid lane so hard, something had to come out of Ichi Gaming. And as a result, Lanham is gonna be dead. And now mid one cuts across with the Exorcism. Another very early attempt at a push here from Secret. Vici Gaming are going to try and defend that though, just like they did with the bottom lane. Imprisonment goes down, just a little bit of harassment. Now the stomp onto Yapster, trying to stop him mid roll. They managed to get him. Now the question is whether or not they can blow him up with the tiny. They certainly can. They've used the avalanche and everything though, so Ace is not going to be caught on his way out. Vici Gaming though, again, defending the towers pushed by Secret. It feels like Secret, because the laning phase went bad, they need these towers very badly, but. Vici Gaming have made that read and are putting all in to defend. Still, right now, with how well Fada has done, stolen stacks, he is number one in net worth. Ori has made the rotation up the top to try to pressure this tower. Fada's just gonna get out, give it up. There are a lot of Vici heroes, and the first tower of the game is gonna get claimed by this rotation. And I like what Secret did there. They made the rotation into the mid lane because that's where their strongest hero is. They even grab the tower now that they see three heroes on the side of Vici up there. So at least we see Vici Gaming, they make a similar kind of rotation to Secret, but at least they're able to actually take the tower. Secret, of course, took the mid-tier one tower, which is probably a little bit better for them. Yeah. Do you remember the game that uh, Liquid played against Fnatic? Where Kuroki played Timbersaw? Yes, and, and he, he just, just sat in mid. That's yeah. literally all he this did. This is what's happening in a game like this. Ace <laughs> was able to play so aggressively forward. Yeah. And he was able to cut the, the mid tower, which is kind of weird to say, but he can actually do that as an Enchantress. Same went for Kuro and his Timbersaw. And then you've got the advantage that the 10 minutes he dwecking came up, he stole that one, and allowed him to take that tower that much easier. The lead, very slight for Vici Gaming. After the towers got traded out, Secret feels like they, uh, I'm not gonna say fully recovered from the laning phase, because it was still kind of good for DK, right? He got free farm against an Abaddon, vice versa. Yeah, this Tiny, though, has also had a pretty cool lane. But everyone on the side of Secret, aside from good one, is starting to catch up at bottom base. See if they can get it with the Earth Splitters. Oh, nice silence out from Yapsor still. Or he's gonna pursue, has the Avalanche toss combination. Managed to catch Ace, but he's already healed so much. Can't go for that kill anymore. And he's gonna receive some punishment in return. Again, Vici Gaming doing everything they can to keep their towers alive against the double push lineup, maybe even triple push lineup of Secret. All three of their cores giving them something to threaten these towers. That movement though is gonna open up the map a little bit more for mid one. He's gonna TP in mid. Gonna cancel that. Yeah, they've and already surrounded that tower. This is a very important tower for Vici to claim. It means that they can also defend their bottom tower if they're fast enough. And they'll definitely take it here. Abaddon does have a TP, he's so if he wants now. to get in front of this bottom lane, he can do so. Yeah. I would imagine that Vici... They're not gonna go it. for it, though. Yeah. They ping like crazy, and they brought three heroes down here. I think the idea was to bring it... Do you think maybe they saw, like, the double damage or something and said, eh, maybe it's a little bit risky? Yeah, getting into a 5 on 5 fight where you can't kill this Enchantress is really risky. Like, wherever yeah. the Enchantress goes, it just becomes a dead lane. 
So they go for the safer play. Now they're gonna make the jump into bottom lane as they see rotations mid. They're gonna try and go for Fauna. Sleep up the uh, Earth Spirit for the time being. He's gonna be out of this fight. Now he comes back alive and is gonna help kill Fenrir. Looks like they just didn't have the damage to be able to pop the Dragonite and will lose the support as a result. OD's coming over, taking a hit until he hit the clap here with a toss up in the air. Puppy's gonna be controlled up. Paparazzi comes in. Couldn't quite get the finish. The imprisonment should be enough now, but we have this OD who's gonna be targeted by Fada. Eleven's here to be able to protect the OD, so Fada realizes this no longer fighting once, but Ori in the back line is gonna be covered up by the exorcism. He is now dead, and this Earth Spirit Ultimate is going to work on Paparazzi. Managed to get the imprisonment onto the Enchantress to make sure he can't get a good slow in. Old Eleven kicked back into Ace, and he can level up his ultimate here anytime, and he's gonna pop it here as the impetus shot comes in. Trying to get the most heal bang for his buck. Oh, I really like that play. It's similar to what 33 tried to do earlier, where he had the disassembled Aeon Disc. Mm -hmm. He saved that ulti. Uh, it's something that AUI taught me a while back, where you hold on to the Wraith King ult, because if you pop it and it's a waste, well, then you've got a spell on like a three minute cooldown. Yeah. But by holding on to it, you can kind of time it for when you want it. Yeah, it feels like uh, a lot of the bends have kind of learned that trick recently. It's just rare to see in a bend yeah. get so much free farm and be so unpressured that he still has that option at level 10. Yeah, it's one of those things about Dota. It seems so simple and when you think about it, but mm -hmm. nice move overall. It's just not something that we see very often. Three to three, 14 and a half minutes in. Oh, Paparazzi getting a lot of damage on Min One. They need something nice. Little juke around the trees. Look at him. He's staying out of sight. Now Fod is here. They need that stun too because Paparazzi is just about to finish him off. But now Min One is healed up with the Spirit Siphon in prison now. And Min One, he's going to be actually be able to heal so much. Paparazzi wants out. that kill, but now he's got to get out with the Four Staff and the Haste now. He will be able to get over to the other side of the trees just ahead of Puppy Bottom Lane. Fiend's Grip, Earth Splitter, Toss, everything to bring down that Enchantress. That is what it takes. That is what you will use. Two different ults and the burst damage of the Tiny is finally enough to bring down Aids. Who's playing as though he was invincible. And in mid lane, Fada picks up Paparazzi. No one runs. Did he not notice that before? Now he's going to be caught. As a result, the stomp is just not there fast enough. Lonham couldn't protect their mid carry, so they're actually going to trade mids out here. When you have four heroes in that lane, you need to get something out of it. Mm -hmm. There's no tower for them to grab right after. They can't go to Roshan with their heroes quite yet, especially now with the Enchantress dead. Important that they got the kill, get something out of it in that position. And that's why Paparazzi, I feel like he should have known about that. Yeah, it was a play that Secret had to go for and he presented the opportunity for Secret to do so. We are gonna get the brief fire damage reduction for the DK. We've seen this uh, a couple times. I feel like uh, about now in the pro scene, I'm, I'm feeling like it's like 50-50 which one we go for. I'm okay with either of them. Yeah. It's very game dependent. That's what we do that. Make that call. And Roll in. Yeah. Attempt. Blink back by Ori. Silence on the Elder Titan, but with Ori disengaging, that is enough for Secret to give up on that kill. Soul Ring. Attempted to be complete by Lanham, so he could just constantly stay out on the map behind his course, protecting them as best as possible. And he's got to, especially with Fada picking up this Shadow Blade. We've already seen how he's playing this one out. He's trying to uh, set up those kills for his allies. They need an initiator of some kind, as the Earth Spirit just isn't strong enough as is. So if you notice, like a lot of the cores in this game don't really need to build offensive items. Mm -hmm. These big damage dealing items like Bloodthorns or Daedalus or anything like that. They're just good with their spells alone. And that's why they're so popular right now. You have a hero like OD that can almost entirely build defensively. He doesn't need DPS items. And as a result, you can build these low cost items that enable you to play faster and faster. Same thing goes for a Death Prophet, where this guy has a hood and a Yule Scepter and he's still gonna probably deal the most damage in every fight. Why, why is it? Is it something about defensive items, these utility items being so strong? Is it something about the meta? Um, and just like, as long as you prevent yourself from being popped, it's good, or? I think it's a combination of things. The way that Dota always goes is it becomes faster and faster. So you need to pick these heroes that are just good with very little. Mm. Like, look at this Enchantress right now. Just a hood, doesn't have to build into some of the more expensive items in this game. And so you're trying to match that speed that your opponent's bringing. Right. Hey, 
TV up to the top lane because that's where our fight is going to be. Nice kick from Yapsor. Landing on two after the roll in. Now Puffy's going to be able to get the freezing field to finish off Paparazzi barely. Fenrir also not going to make his way out. A successful team fight for Team Secret, but just by the skin of their teeth. That was so close. I thought there was no way that the OD was going to get that TP off. Yeah. But and then, then it actually almost came true. Key here is can you get anything more out of this? And with the Enchantress, this is what we want some kind of objective based play. Walk into the Roshan pit. And it's be a it's, nice pickup. It does look like. Vici Gaming have a read as they already have the spirit out from Lanham. He's going to be able to hit a stomp on Ace if he wants. No, holds it. Uh, I thought that would have been a decent time just to keep those heroes in the pit, see what happens. As is, though, with them running out of the pit, it's just going to be a wasted exorcism. So you are right, William. They get those two kills, but they weren't actually able to translate it into anything else. Yeah, that's the scary thing right now for Secret is they are getting some kills, but they're not transitioning. You want them to be able to transition some of these. It feels like they, they're always less map control. They're always on their side of the map. They're not able to use these exorcisms and dragon forms to go and pressure towers like they like. They're going themselves. Ooh, this is a cute little play. I like this from VG This Gaming. is aggressive. And this is what we've been missing in some of these games out of these Chinese teams. Mm -hmm. Playing to win. That's exactly what they're doing here. Secret C, Fenrir's positioning. I'm like, there's no way this guy is doing this by himself. We're going to take that kill, but we need to get in the pit now. Just they're going to slow down to Ori, and they're going to actually get into a full team fight here because Roshan's not going to be dying anytime soon. So, Olaf, Roshan, they take team. over. Maybe one team take a blow. One team, they can actually take him down. They beat him down with a stick. But the OD managed to drop a big ultimate that kills Yapsor as well. But is still going to try and fight this one out. They have a good Earth Spirit ultimate taking these heroes down. Paparazzi, though, thanks in part to the Solar Crest, takes a lot of that damage, but it does mean that all the legends is going to end up going down. Earth Splitter out with the stop. Going to be able to actually not hit anything. Paparazzi does have a four staff. Needs to be able to imprison one and four staff away. But Bonnet's going to be able to nail that stun. And he's not going to be making it out here. Four staff away. A little bit farther. But the impetus shot will finish him off. Double kill for Ace. Beachy Gaming thought with the exorcism down, they would be able to take an engagement or at least try and sneak a Roshan. Turns out they were wrong. A two for three exchange with a buyback out from the Earth Spirit, though. This fight Secret's is not go. over yet. Secret's gonna go for it, Beachy. Sneaking out, trying to catch some heroes, seeing if they actually want to interrupt this Roshan reattempt by Team Secret. And I'm gonna spot it. And without the Death Prophet Ultimate, it's not going to be easy for him either. Yeah, certainly not. This Earth Spirit's still getting really good information, though, in the back line. Sees Ori at about half HP. Now Maybe he can kick Lanham down to the river. Thought about it. Lanham backed up. Exodus him out, and they're going to give up on Roshan. Probably for the best for Beachy Gaming, to be honest. That was a wild attempt by them. They don't yeah. have the best Roche taking heroes. They thought that maybe Secret would completely disengage. Somebody would go bottom, but not the case at all. Secret, they stayed around the area and they are rewarded for their efforts. Maybe they uh, thought too much of their Abaddon because he's really the only Roche hero here, yeah. right? They thought, oh, with the Solar Crest, the Helmet's on, we'll be able to do this, no problem. Turns out a lot slower than they anticipated. And I really like this Secret. They get the objective in the Roshan, they know that Oh, Fada's going to gonna play to cover bottom lane as well. Now they're playing. They're speeding up their game. Yeah. They're moving everywhere on the map right now. Still, though, thanks to the Helmet Dom, Old Eleven can always threaten these towers. Doesn't even need a hero there. Mass rotations coming out from Secret, but nobody here from Beachy Gaming. Just a, uh, just old Cardi. And he'll be the one to fall. Tower deny, perhaps. We'll go back to the replay, check out that Roshan fight where Vici Gaming tried to sneak it after Secret failed to get the Roshan earlier. But you could see with one hero down and Old Eleven already the half HP, he has to pop his false promise pretty early into this fight, and it results in his death later on. Once they're once Secret were able to re-engage with Ace and Fada. I mean, they didn't need Minwan in that fight, right? He didn't have exorcism, so his death, it looks impactful, but it's not actually. They can still fight, because Ace can just front line. Yeah. Which is why Paparazzi's trying to go for the BKB. 11, TP will Good. be successful. Good little hiding spot there. They're still looking. Yeah, they still have not found where he was when he TP'd out. 
They'll know they're probably soon. And now more pressure on the side lanes. A tier two being beaten down by creeps. And Ace trying to mess with Old Eleven. I don't think Old Eleven cares too much. He's got that solar crest, so some of the shots aren't even landing in the first place. So he gets the lane pushed out. Is going for a Lotus Orb next. So he can get rid of the silence, I presume. The panel talked about how Death Prophet can be effective hero against the Abaddon, who's trying to protect heroes like this uh, this OD. The AoE silence is pretty good at covering that. Yeah. If you get the Silver Edge hit off into the silence on the Death Prophet, uh, the Abaddon just can't ult. Yeah. So you got to find a way to be able to take that off. Lotus Orb is perfect. Maybe we'll see it used on one of his allies as well. See if we could bounce back some sort of Dragon Tail or something, possibly. Meanwhile, though, Tier 2 will fall in the bottom lane. Tiny gonna try and do something similar here at top. Or it already died earlier and I missed it. Even though Beachy, they gave up the Roshan secret or leading in kills, the reason why this game score is the Goldie isn't really there for them is the fact that whatever secret are doing, each are doing with less heroes. Because yeah. when you have the Aegis, uh, you feel like you have to protect it. Like you have to protect that advantage. You don't want to just throw it away, so you're more likely to go for the five-man ball. And in that sense, it makes it easier almost for Beachy to play because they can avoid those fights. Oh, the team is going to set up here on the OD. Now he has Imprisonment as well as Force Staff. He needs to make sure he's not caught by Fada's hard stun, though. Fada couldn't quite get there in time. TPN from the Abandoned going to be cancelled. He's going to try and utilize this space, knowing that there's heroes from Secret at top, pushing bottom a little bit more. And that's what I was talking about. Whenever Secret wants to make a play, because they, they I guess, they're going to go for this three-man, mm -hmm. try to secure themselves some kills. Whereas Vichy is just farming everywhere. Everyone on this team is hitting creeps. Same goes with tower pushes, right? Like, in order for Secret to threaten a tower, they need all their heroes, but... For Vichy Gaming, oftentimes it's just old 11. Yeah. It makes it really easy for them to play around that fact. We are going to have a push here from Secret onto that tier 2. As we are a little bit blind here. Yeah. We're back. Chipping away at it, Vichy Gaming still trying to defend. Poking at Ace as best as possible, seeing if they can get him low enough to actually just engage and maybe even take down that Aegis for free. Not going to be the case, though. Secret take the tier two, and nothing really lost in return. They even managed to get a TP back to bottom lane. A stomp, not really lasting for long here. Did it just me or these stomps just not lasting at all? Yeah. Only two levels. He's gotten four in the. Uh... Natural order. Mm. Cool spell name. Oh, DD picked up. They're gonna go for the smoke. They're anticipating. Aegis is out. Oh yeah, this would be a very fast kill if they can find some sort of important core like the Death Prophet with a double damage tiny. It's hard to beat that kind of burst damage. They want to kill Fada at bottom and then grab two towers. Okay. Well, the Secret are anticipating that move, and they're playing Secret are smoked up themselves. They are going to run into each other, or he's going to be able to get the jump, though, on the app. So the sounds comes out from mid one, not going to be good enough with BKB pops, and they get the imprisonment. Setting up on this kill, see if they blow up the OG real quickly. Fiend's Grip will make sure that even if the stop misses from Lonham, they still get the kill and pressure the towers. The Levin is chasing Fada right now into the trees he goes. They do have a dust out as well. Glimmer Cape, but Fada, if he's spotted here, has a nice little in his pocket there in the trees, but it's going to be spotted out finally, or he's going to be able to catch him with a combination stop down as well. Paparazzi rips him apart as the OT, and that is three dead yeah. from Secret with a tier one down. And Beachy Gaming. Are you going to press for more? They're going to go for that tier two as well. I like the, the fact that they still continue to go for Fada with Pillars down. That was supposed to just be a one-off with the two towers, but instead, they might even go high ground with this. They take this tower very fast with the Curse of Avernus. That's going to fall, but Vichy are going to play it safe. Deal with that top lane, deal with the mid lane, reset. But a good move by them to claim two towers and a good amount of kills. Correct me if I'm wrong, William, but this feels like Thousand gold, once upon a time, lead for secret. Didn't really feel that much. Vici Gaming now actually are the ones who hold the lead in net worth, but it feels a lot better for them. It feels like these heroes, they're just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, and secret 
they're kind of on a watch, aren't they? Yeah. The reason why you feel that way, and if you're watching, like, why doesn't it feel as though Secret is losing anymore? Is because they can't start the fights. It's mm. not easy. When you lose the Absol immediately, who is your initiator, the fight almost just ends. Yeah. From that moment on, because you have the one stun from the Dragon Knight to rely on as you, your disabled. So if you pop Exorcism and try and turn, like, maybe no you just gonna get, get blown caught. up, or yeah. they're just gonna run away, right? There, there's no hard catch, there's exactly. no hard lockdown. Or SVG, they've got the ET, they've got the Bane. They can run in with their Abaddon to scout things first. And vision is very important in these fights. So if you've got a hero that has a full life to play with, uh, it's a little bit scary. And Fada, Silver Edge is gonna be nice at this point, but if VG are the ones making the moves, they'll come with the dust, they'll come with the sentries, and they'll kind of neutralize that item. Do you think we needed a, a BKB? on this DK. We saw the way Optic played DK against OD and CC and C was just like constantly trying to blink in and stun that OD, trying to get the jump on him before BKB could be utilized. I got a catch on him here. I break him, stun him, and he is dead. I got a ping, just get out. Levin just continuing to farm. Still a very close game. Mm -hmm. But all three cores right now are on top of Vici. So it's hard for Seeker to be able to get an, an initiation, but part of that is their draft, right? They sacrificed initiation for a, a lot more laning power and a lot more pushing power. If they win that big fight with, between Dragon Form, between being able to enchant a Siege Creep, between the, the Exorcism, they will just demolish what's left of yeah. these objectives. They can play very quick around that. Mm -hmm. So this net worth lead, in terms of cores, is a little bit misleading because Death Prophet ult is still so powerful at this phase of the game. Right. So even if it, she's at 9k, you're gonna feel yeah. a lot bigger impact than just an, a 9k net worth hero. But they do have to defend top, and that's what I would say VG Gaming has been very attentive to, is always split pushing out these side lanes, trying to force the rest of Secret back on their side of the map. Secret only sending Puppy up there, still trying to maintain some sort of aggression at bottom, but couldn't really find it, and the Elder Titan this time around will not be caught trying to push. Puppy's got an unreal amount of farm right now. Oh, I think uh, Lottam's gonna try and bait himself a little bit more as this team sweeps across here, looking and hoping to be able to find somebody inside of their own jungle. Maybe trying to go on Lonham or something. Not going to be the case, though. Secret have been wise to this. You should see this right now. Secret are holding on. High ground area. It doesn't look as though Michi want to take the fight without Lonham. They're going to wait. They spot everything with this ward. They know that everyone from Secret is up here. You think a shrine fight is just unnecessarily risky for Michi? It's so scary. So they're going to re-smoke and see if they can get themselves maybe on that high ground next to the Roshan pit. Roshan is up. Oh boy, Vichy Gaming. Are you gonna try round two of sneaking Rosh? I hope not. No, they're gonna wait around this area and try to wait for Secret to come in, catch them unawares, but they are on the low ground, so they're gonna get to the high ground here. Maybe Ace. they're gonna go for the toss back on Ace, man, to get the toss just up in the air, and the Avalanche almost beat Ace down to a wall, not quite enough, and now counter initiation. What a big play from Yapsor with Fada following up. All that AOE damage, Paparazzi, a low HP, has to turn and fight a little bit, but can't really get on top of anybody. So now he's gonna hand on a puppy. These supports, though, are not the heroes that you wanted to be able to go for. All the level and the false promise already caught. The two he's man. gonna be in trouble. Nice two man stop, but the follow up from Lonim is gonna be able to connect some of his heroes, but unfortunately, it still means the Abaddon is gonna die. Lonim, with a high ground miss from Fada, will survive for now. And it does look like Vichy Gaming aren't gonna be able to disengage, but with two heroes down, at least wide open the Roshan. Secret head in with the Exorcism looking to take. Ori, the Poppy, Poppy, trying to get a nice defensive ward down to be able to protect this Roshan they attempt from Secret. Now. now with him dead. Exorcism's dead, down. And Lonim already having Spirit out. This makes it a whole lot harder for Secret. We've seen this position from them before. There's so many sentries around that area. Secret has one down, trying to anticipate for it, but doesn't quite find the vision that Vichy have, and this is gonna force the disengage, but what a play from Yapsor. He was so fast on the uptick, and that was Vichy not being able to follow up on the Tiny. Mm -hmm. They go in, they hard commit thinking- I thought he was gonna go for the toss back. Yeah, I thought there was a few moves that he could have made there, but yeah. when he tossed him straight into the air, I think his team was like, all right, I guess we're 
trying to get in here. Yeah, and that, that forces this whole entire team to run forward, and that creates a nice little area for Fana and Yamstar to be able to get a strong initiation in. Yeah. And whereas VKB was king there. Yeah, whereas the other way, right, we get the toss back, then it's Secret who have to run into Vici Gaming and maybe funnel themselves a little bit. Yeah, so we're, we're gonna, gonna see. watch the replay again as Ori, look how far ahead he is from the rest of his team. His team clumps up in a big group. You have a gigantic silence kick from Yamstar, and Fada with the AoE damage has already put Paparazzi well below half. And this makes it so that Paparazzi can't play very aggressively. And he was in the tree lines. Not really the best place for this OD to play. Yeah, for whatever reason, he really wanted to track down Yapsor. That comes down to Yapsor making that play. He gets his three-man stun, mm -hmm. the follow-up. Even if you don't kill Paparazzi, you get him low oh, enough. Oh, Ichi Gaming. They're gonna try a Roshan attempt again. It's not very fast. For there that. is no exorcism. Still gonna go out, or he's gonna jump in. Pops BKB tried to finish off base, but a Glimmer Cape is gonna be able to protect him from Paparazzi, who still wants that kill. Can't really go for the DK either. Take it, Ace. He's already healed up, and now his BKB is worn out. He's been stunned up. Field 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 right now. Oh, freezing field plus the infinite shot, threatening the OT, but it's not quite enough. We go back to the Roshan pit. They try to fight this one out, but the Exorcism is now ready to go for mid one. He's tracked down these heroes with the Spirit Siphon, looking to be able to grab Ori. Chase him down as best as possible. Bottom is gonna be caught by Yapsor here. Good imprisonment save there from Pop. Paparazzi keeping the Death Prophet off of the rest of his team, but with the Abaddon down, Secret will go back into the Roshan pit and try and finish this one off. So that's going to be both Aegis and she's Aegis for Ace, who they've had a hard enough time coordinating to kill once, is now going to have a second life. And then, in turn, Fana is going to be the wall. Oh, what a big jump in from Ori. He can actually get the strong initiation. Toss up in the air. But now a silence onto the OD with no BKB. He can't actually get any good damage out. Impetus shots raining in. One long range shot is not going to be enough to be able to finish up Paparazzi's secret. Will stay alive here. Small little Tempai Vici Gaming to get in there. Couldn't really do much. Bottom lane looks like the ET is going to be caught by Yapsor and Puppy. 10 to 14, a 3k gold lead secret, building up more and more steam. They're finally starting to get the pickoffs. The Roshan fight, once again, Vichy try to take it themselves, walk in at first. The fight is very awkward for them. This is the second time now they've tried to go for Ace because he is the BKB piercer on their team, but they're just unable to do anything to him. Not able to bring him down fast enough with their heroes. You see that Paparazzi commits the BKB, he wastes that entire duration. Trying to follow up on the Enchantress, can't bring her down. Scythe of Ice is going to be the next item for our OD. Aeon Disc is a nice choice for a Puppy. As uh, he's not going to be blown up. The Glimmer Cape, super helpful as well. They tried to go on Ace in that last engagement. Jumped him, the OD came out of the pit to try and target him. But Glimmer Cape and uh, the shots from the OD completely whiffed. Yeah, that was just... Nice engagement overall for Secret. It's, if you can't burst, the ability to reset from Secret is very good. They can wait out those BKBs. They have ways to fight around that fact. And if you look at Vichy's lineup, they don't. When Team Secret pop their own BKBs on the side of this DK, he feels unkillable. Nice aggressive ward behind this tier two, setting Secret up for an easy push. Unlikely to Vici Gaming defend, and if they do, they're probably going to be caught. Another ward laid out. The supports are going to wrap around, make sure that this tier 2 does fall. Meanwhile, Vici Gaming not getting close to this push whatsoever. They're actually just shoving out both mid and bottom, but they're going to have to go back to defend the high ground soon. That is a double damage Dragonite. It's about to fade, though. Pops his Dragon form. And with the uh, Enchantress in the back line, we've also seen this story before with the Enchantress being the one to seize the high ground. Oh, yeah, sir. Tried to go for a cheeky play, see if he can kick down Old Eleven. Also got a ward out. OT, unable to get the Hurricane Pike in. And Ori is also threatening a tier three himself. Slow down a little bit. Siege Wagon's going to be put to a halt. Sending back Old Eleven with the Hurricane Pike. Get some shots on him. Not able to pop his ultimate, though. The bad now gonna pursue. Paparazzi catch someone with the imprisonment now. They're gonna be able to get the stomp on Ace. Can they actually coordinate enough to fuel the blow up? 
The Silent tosses it all deep, but they managed to get a Nightmare for a second. In Lotus Orb, no, they're just going to throw down the imprisonment to be able to buy him a little bit of time. The BKB popped by Fauna. He will go for these supports. Now Ori is here in the engagement. Dragon Tail stunned up. He needs to get out of here, though. He does have a BKB. He's going to turn and fight Fauna with the sub going out. They've almost blown up Fauna, so he pops the cheese just in time. OT, Silent up. Again, no damage out of him. Off the ult, but still not enough to be able to bring anybody down. And Paparazzi chased into the base. Old 11, helping to be able to keep him alive. Has a Hamonic shield up in a second. Now they're going to turn. Oh no, a silence out from the OT. He's not getting any damage again. These silences are just non-stop, stopping all the OGs in damage. He can't get the arcane orbs out. And if you're not throwing down arcane orbs, then what kind of hero are you really? Old 11, almost forced into another ultimate. They're going to try and fight this one out without needing Ori's buyback, but secret. They're just going to keep on threatening here. Ace, low on mana. Now he's out of damage. Those impetus shots, only gonna have a limited number of them for this next engagement. Jump in. Imprisonment setting up on this here with the stomp. Yeah, sure, it looks like he's gonna be blown up right away. Secret playing up that high ground. Ace already trying to get some shots into that low ground onto the Abaddon, but he does have the borrowed time so he can fight. Fought is gonna go for the BKB. Glimmer came TP out. They don't have anything to stop that one, but they do have something to stop that one. They managed to get the Nightmare onto Ace. That's the big target. Death Prophet, Ghoul Scepter up in the air. They're gonna have to give up on Ace. No, they actually managed to get a Ghoul Scepter. Stop him. What a great play. BKB activated by mid one, but they'll beat him down. No, he managed to get the TP out. Ace, okay. All these other heroes managed to escape but surely this one will die ace with the ages too it's gonna be a long chase but they should be able to bring him down twice secret none of his allies are nearby he's got the pike they're trying to cut off his region trying to push the ot back he immediately blinks forward catches them again with the imprisonment reset stomp up and now or will help them finish it off so Big time kill on Ace, really needed that one, but that was so close to being total disaster for a Secret, as if the Death Prophet got caught there as well, that could have been Vici Gaming forcing out some buybacks. Yeah. And that top engagement begins where, because they forced Puppy back, they're trying to take that Boron by fight, but the Aegis Enchantress, you see how hard it is for them to take her down. There was a very nice uh, Silver Edge hit onto the Abaddon, mm -hmm. into the Silence, they almost brought down the Abaddon there, and when his ulti popped, Paparazzi, in fact, imprisoned him. So, mm. the entire duration... ...completely wasted. That forces everyone back. The Tiny goes in at that point, but he's got no backup. He thought the Abaddon, with his ult proc, was going to yeah. be able to follow up with him. Normally, that's uh, the Abaddon versus the OD. That's supposed to be the counter. Yeah, so when you said he saved him with the Astral. I, I, I didn't see, I didn't see the borrow time go off. That is really unfortunate. Eleven was just like, uh, not the best timer. <laughs> that was four seconds when the ultimate just goes down. Oh. Absolutely nothing. Then they really could have done a lot better in that fight. Yeah, and even with this Enchantress, I mean, she's 3,000 net worth behind these heroes. You saw how difficult it was to bring her down. Yeah. In a one-on-four situation where they all surrounded her. <laughs> The uh, Spirit Vessel is finally out from our Elder Titan, so that is always going to be helpful versus the Enchantress as well. Yeah. Uh, hell, all three of the cords actually have great ways to be able to regen up. There's a Hex now too. But Secret had to be a little bit cleaner about getting out there. Yeah. Once they showed Puppy at bottom, it had to be full retreat mode. Mm. It's a four on five fight, even with a net worth disadvantage. If you look at it, Puppy represents 10k of what Secret has. Yeah, so we're going to be caught inside the trees. Yul Scepter stops his rollout. Unless he provides some miraculous juice here, he will be picked off. And we are getting closer and closer to those bigger talents. Level 22 right now in the event. If he gets to level 25, that's a massive one, the OD. While he struggled to be able to get good arcane orbs in because of the silences and the glimmer capes defending against the hurricane pike, the level 25, 60 arcane orb in steel means that kind of harassment becomes so much more powerful as that intelligence just builds and builds. And now Ori, playing aggressively, he wants to deal with the creep wave so that they can go for a pick. They're going to get a DD oh. onto this OD. Sort of annoying for Vici is that they can't Roshan very easily. <laughs> yeah. Like that Rosh fight area has not been kind to them. It feels like Vici Gaming may have actually already won this game if it wasn't for the last two Roshan yeah. attempts. And because they can't Roshan, it means they've got to take fights outside that base. Right. But Secret can be patient, and they consistently are. They're allowing Vici to open up on that area, then they just come swarming in. 
feels like even when they're down, they understand that they can always come back through mistakes on the enemy, and they they really just give the enemy that kind of uh, yeah. opening, right? Where they, they just like, you can take all this map, you can see if you can try and catch us in the act. We're gonna play tight around each other and wait for you guys to stumble into a bad engagement. Beachy Gaming though, they are, uh, they understand this. They're making sure to get all these lanes pushed in. Not trying to die too heavily. We'll see what happens with Roshan okay, being up. Again. They're gonna go for this a third time. Okay. And they waited for the DD Ooh. to fade out first. Yeah. So there's no DD on this OD. They're gonna go for it again, Secret. Okay, but they might be fast enough this time. Maybe. It's about half, Secret. Se Secret's gonna go into the Radiant Jungle. Wait, no. The creep saw them. And once again, Secret spot this out. They want to go for the silver. They're going to try and silence the madness as best as possible. The imprisoned is going to be able to save. Meanwhile, Yapsor in the back line. Nance get a two man stun plus the silence. Yapsor is going to be beat down by Ori, though. He's already dead with the event. He's got the fall from him. He's going to be okay. Borrowed time is going to be able to keep him alive. The back off the full of Death Prophet all by himself. He's caught with the beast. He's dead. Now the DK also caught. BG Gaming want to be able to get as many mini heroes possible. And they're going to be able to get an ace as well. No, he's going to be able to get Imprisonment down. Great double stuff. Aeon Dis going out from Puppy. But He's just gonna soon as the Aeon Disc is down, he is dead as well. Ace slowed down. BG Gaming, they found the big team fight. They have been in control of this game for a while now, but this solidifies it. BG They're Gaming, gonna go high ground. wipe Team Secret 5 0. will go high ground with no buybacks up on Team Secret. And Secret, they try to get cute. They went for the combo onto the Abaddon. Paparazzi this time around, that would be a prison save that they needed. The Absor goes in, doesn't get to drop any spells. Ori blows him up immediately, and Secret messed up a fight once, and it's gonna cost him dearly. The Roshan doesn't go for Vichy for the third time, but this time, the fight is much cleaner for them. And this time, it was the difference was they abandoned the Roshan yes. fight, and Team Secret so choosing look at to get they into a nasty so squabble. much time. Yapsor yeah. was completely in by himself. Couldn't get any abilities off. Look at the positioning from Secret. So far away, they're split up onto that high ground river. You have yeah. two heroes on one side, three heroes on the other. You've got to be combined with your strength. Now, they've got an Aegis, they've got a Cheese, and a Refresher Shard. So, they're going to give the Refresher Shard to the OD for the double Scythe, double BKB. Allowing him to just get in there and blow somebody up. Also has the Cheese to fall back on after he pops that Refresher Shard. And we're seeing, uh, honestly, when... OD does pop the BKB. There's nothing from the secret side that really challenges him. If, Exor if Death Prophet tries to go for it with Exorcism, OD is just gonna blow him up with Arcane Orbs. Yeah. The key here is that now Fada's BKB is starting to get really low. Yeah. You saw that when he first runs in, when he pops his BKB, everyone from Vichy, because they had two heroes to deal with on their side of the river, mm -hmm. they just let him run out. They're just like, we'll deal with these first two heroes. You'll have to come into us, into our high ground area. It made it impossible for Secret to take that fight. And Puppy? Puppy blinks away, but they've caught the Death Prophet with the side of the vice. He's dead. 70 seconds. Team Secret now have to defend a second lane of Rax and perhaps a third in a four versus five scenario. A lot of Pots join the rest of his team as he's pushing out the top lane. They're not going to wait for him, though, with the mid lane already pushing in. The backdoor protection is unlocked. And now it's up to Ace, letting those infinite shots rain on fire, but now this time around they got the uh, aggressive toss forward. But Fada is going to BKB out. There's a beast trip. Great play from Fenrir, locking down that carry. Ace and buyback out from him. Paparazzi, though, goes to the back line. Number two. He can actually take out Ace, and he does. There's no buyback there. Fada's back with his dragon form, but it's all by himself. He has got to be the lone core to fight back the wave of Fiji gaming heroes. Pushing into their base, taking the second lane of Brax, 25 seconds until the Death Prophet is back up. And that Dragon Form's not gonna last too much longer either. Paparazzi, fearless in his positioning, just blinks forward, immediately goes for the Crystal Maiden, eliminates another secret hero. They're gonna call it. Secret call it here. They know this game is over with a 19,000 gold lead for Vici Gaming. Game one is all theirs in this best of three. And it took that one fight around that Roche area. They finally learned, they disengaged from that area first. They took the high ground area. Yeah on their side.